Not only are you gonna have people climbing up next to the inside section of the balcony all day, but the main goal of climbing here is to get to the top and ring the bell. So if you're gonna be hanging out on your balcony during the day when the rock climbing walls are open, you're gonna be hearing a lot of ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. This week we are back on board the Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas to take a look at another suite that is so large, luxurious, and expansive that I will probably never set foot in one again. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. I also wrote a book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship with crazy stories of things that have actually happened to me while traveling around the world. It's available on Amazon now. Not only am I gonna show you inside this two bedroom aqua theater suite, but we're also gonna talk about the price and spoiler alert, it's a lot. And in case you're asking yourself, but Morgan, if this cabin is so expensive, how did you get to take a look inside in the first place? Well, on our transatlantic cruise, I was lucky enough to join a Facebook group for the cruise and people in the Facebook group created a cabin crawl. I talked a lot more about that in the last suite tour video from last week where we took a look at the one bedroom grand suite. I call it one bedroom because for me, a bedroom has to be a separate room with a door that separates it from everything else. And this is just a bed behind a divider wall with a curtain. And for me, that's not a bedroom. Anyways, in last week's video, we compared that cabin to just two adjoining balcony cabins with all the doors open, cause the space is the same and both of them have sort of advantages and disadvantages. And this week, as mentioned, we're taking a look at a huge aqua theater suite at the back of the Symphony of the Seas. But this is not a typical cabin tour because because A, this was not my cabin and I never actually stayed there, and two, there's a lot of other people looking at the cabin at the same time. So not every shot that I got at the cabin is filled with people. Some of them are kind of wide open where you get to see a lot, but then some of them are a little bit crowded, just so you know. In order to make it a little bit easier to see how everything is laid out, I grabbed this floor plan from Cruise Mapper. So we're gonna look at the floor plan, look at the actual space, and then look at the floor plan and look at the actual space. And even though there's other people walking around, you're still gonna get a good idea of what you get for this huge price tag. If you look at the back of the symphony here, this is where the aqua theater suites are located and they have huge wraparound balconies that are actually only semi-private except for the outside edges. So comparing it to the floor plan here, let's take a walk in and take a look at the first smaller bedroom, which if you look carefully, also has two drop-down beds on the sides. According to the website, up to eight people can stay in one of these suites with four being in this room. So two on the bed and then two in these drop down beds. I think this would be a really cramped sleeping situation, but there's plenty of space in the rest of the suite to spread out. Moving on to the gigantic living room area, basically sort of in the middle of this suite. This space alone is bigger than like two normal cruise cabins and this is just the living room. I believe the sofa becomes a bed for two people as well and check out this huge panorama window situation over here. It's, it's really just amazing. This room also has balcony access on two different sides. It must get windy in there if you have both windows open. Now let's take a stroll down the hallway. Yeah, a cruise suite with a hallway and take a look at the other bedroom. This room has a huge bed inside and its own private bathroom. By the way, there is another bathroom in this suite, but the door was closed when I was walking around, so I decided not to risk it. I'm assuming it's similar to this one. Go outside and look at this huge wraparound balcony. Can you imagine having all this space outdoors on your cruise? Not only is it big enough to have like an entire cocktail party out there, but there's also space for a dining room table if you want to dine al fresco. And one of the huge bonuses to these aqua theater suites are the aqua theater seats. 
The Oasis class of ships from Royal Caribbean are the only ships in the world with this kind of outdoor performance space, and the shows that they produce here are pretty spectacular and very popular. So, having your own private balcony for this venue is pretty special. However, there's another thing that's right next to your balcony that could be a little bit annoying, and that is the rock climbing wall. On both sides of these pillars of Aqua Theater Suites on the Symphony, there are rock climbing walls. So not only are you going to have people climbing up next to the inside section of the balcony all day, but the main goal of climbing here is to get to the top and ring the bell. So if you're going to be hanging out on your balcony during the day when the rock climbing walls are open, you're going to be hearing a lot of ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. Listen to this little clip. You can hear the bell here and that happens like all day long. That you come out of, you come out of, you come out of on the if you've stayed in one of these aqua theater suites, please let me know if this is actually a factor or if I'm just sort of imagining that this would be annoying. I just know if I'm trying to relax on the balcony and read a book or maybe take a nap in the fresh air or something or just have the window open or the, the door open, I just imagine hearing this bell every few minutes would be kind of disturbing, but I don't know, maybe I'm making a bigger deal out of it than it is. If you have experience in these suites, please let me know. And of course, having all this space and all the amenities that come with booking a suite, which we also talked about in last week's video, of course, that comes with a hefty price tag. And we're gonna take a look at that right after this commercial break. Did a commercial just show up for you? If it did, let me know in the comments below what it was about. As always, when we're talking about suites, I remind people that what you're paying for is not just the extra space. When you book a suite on a cruise, you're also getting a lot of perks, a lot of goodies that people who book normal cabins don't get. So keep that in mind. And I did a random search to find the price of one of these two bedroom aqua theater suites. And it was pretty hard to find a cruise that still had one available. I guess these are really popular, which is surprising to me when you find out how expensive they are. I searched through every sailing in August and almost every sailing in September until I found one that was available. And before I actually tell you the price, I want you to guess. So if you're sitting there alone, come up with a number in your head. If there's two of you sitting there, then discuss it with each other. And then let's see who can get the closest. Whoever wins gets a five minute back rub from the other person. Sorry, that's the rules here on very unofficial travel guides. Okay, did you come up with the price yet? For a one week sailing, seven days on the Symphony of the Seas in one of these aqua suites, the price is seven, 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 seven thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars. Seventeen thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars. That's almost $9,000 per person for a week of cruising. That's over $1,200 per person per day. For a lot of people, that's like a month's rent per day for this cruise cabin. I love cruising. I love luxury. You know, here on the very unofficial travel guides every once in a while. We like to splurge a little bit. But most of the times I'm looking for a really good value for whatever it is I wanna do. And personally, I would rather cruise like 10 times in a normal cabin than one time in a cabin like this. It just, this price for one cruise, it is so far away from any sort of horizon that I have for a budget for one trip. I just can't imagine ever thinking, oh yeah, okay, 17,000, let's do it. Like I said, not hating on the people who do and who can because hey, good for you. As always, I'm really interested to hear what you think about this suite, what you think about the price. And like I said, if you've stayed there, let me know did you think it was worth it in the end? Was that bell dinging all day long as annoying as I picture it to be? Was it cool to have your own seats for the aqua shows or was that also annoying because they are pretty loud? I wanna know all those things in the comments. And this week on Sunday Sofa Time, we're gonna be talking about the things about a transatlantic cruise that you might actually love compared to a normal like island hopping cruise. And before we go, let's just take one moment here to say hello to today's special guest. This guy here, hi there, welcome, thanks for coming. That's the secret word. If you've watched till this part of the video, 
write special guest in the comments and I'll know that you were here till the very end. So just make sure you're subscribed before you move on here while you're down there, press the thumbs up button and I look forward to seeing you here again soon on the very unofficial travel guides. Bye-bye.